Hello, and if you are joining us for the first time, welcome. We are Remarkist, communities of fans who watch television shows and movies together virtually, but as if we're in the same room, gathered around the same television. We do this using the Clubhouse app, and we would love to have you join us for future watches. You can simply make an account on Clubhouse and search for our name, Remarkist, to find our club. Or if you'd like more information about the project as a whole, please visit Remarkist.com to learn lots more about who we are and what we do. As for our recordings, remember that we always get our episodes started but paused at the zero second mark and count down to pressing the play button together at the same time. That way, our experience can be as synced up as possible. You can pause this for a moment to get that set up, or if you're ready to go, let's get this thing started. Is everyone ready? So ready. ready. Absolutely. Yep. Great. Yes. Here, we, here we go. One, two, three. I love the Moira screen. Come on, Johnny. <laughs> I love her. I love her shrieks. Season two hair. Awkward. Oh, wow. Okay. Didn't expect that.
<laughs> so worried for her poor bag. Yeah, the word bag should be replaced with sun. <laughs> <laughs> Super fun. That looks like a very small doorway. I was thinking that too. Roland, always there to give you reassurance. Oh my gosh. I just realized his name is Roland Shit. Yes. <laughs> like roll, like yes. rolling in shit. Yes. Oh my God. I just got it either. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. Thank you, John. I didn't I didn't put that together either. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> His parents really loved him. He found that they found the truck. Roland. <laughs> Why is she eating a milkshake with a fork? What is wrong with her? She's very special. This guy, oh my gosh, I, I can't believe it. <laughs> Thank you. 
Poor Ted just doesn't get it. We <laughs> love it. so strong with those two. Oh my goodness. I love dying. Is that really a thing? I think so. Yeah. What? Here come I think Aaron's favorite part. I think this is everyone's ah! favorite. Yes. I've heard of eyebrows being dyed, but not eyelashes. Oh no, I just Googled it. It's totally a thing. Yeah, I just had mine done last week. I'm guessing you have blonde eyelashes, Mandy? No, I was kidding. I did not have <laughs> eyelashes dyed. <laughs> Very glad that you... This is the best David ever. What happened? <laughs>
good for Amish people. That reminds me of the bag from Halloween Town. Restraint. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, nope. So, GTFO in the politest way, but GTFO. <laughs> and they take him for ice cream. I love her hat. <laughs> which hat Moira's yeah I kind of hate Alexis's hat Alexis's looks like she has a feather boa attached to it it's so big it's huge and it like just flaps down by the side of her head <laughs> but Moira's is uh, definitely pretty great They both look like bird casualties. Wait for it. I'm so glad um, we got David's like iconic rings at the end of season one, and that we have them still. Because... If she, but is she suggesting that she has slept in the back of? Yes, of yes. course she has. I think she, the cab is the yeah. The cab is, is not the is the front. It's not. Oh, and yeah, yeah but still the like the truck cab of the cab is front. So I then, believe that Alexis has with some but wh why? rich DJ or something. Who knows? Hmm. <laughs> A dead squirrel. <laughs>
I love their relationship. Mm. Or Stevie. Finish. <laughs> oh my. I love David's sweatshirt. I want it. I think that's fair. You don't have to pay 30 cents in a mile. <laughs> Just give him the orange. And then he steals hers. Oh, that was great. So now you get all those memes of him sitting in a field. Yep. Well, I mean, I haven't seen that many of them, but now I, now I, I can place that, at least place that location. I had to do artwork for Schitt's Creek and I did that scene and it's my favorite Schitt's Creek piece I've ever done. It's so awesome. That's my favorite, David. Something also that I realized, like, the um the correlation between shit and roses um there's like an expression isn't there that's like about you about your poop not smelling yes. your poop, smell, poop smelling like roses or something like that or it's like oh oh and your your poop smells like roses or I, something like that yes my like, grandfather used that phrase quite often Yeah, like like you would say it to somebody who who thinks that they're so great. You're like like uh, like like oh, and you think your you, oh, and you think your poop smells like roses. Am I the only one who? Me and Kendra are the only ones who. No. Familiar really with familiar with that with that expression. Yep. Know that one. What expression? Sorry, I missed that. Poop. Poop smelling like roses. Like when people say like, oh, oh, like it's it's the equivalent of saying like, oh, you think your you you think think your shit doesn't stink, you know, or you think your shit smells like roses. And it's shits creek, right? The shits, and then these then their their last name is the roses. Yes, I've heard that. I've heard that a lot. And it was also in, I believe, she's all that as well. I found one that says, fall into shit and come up smelling like roses. Yeah, you saw that one too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's an, there's an expression or variations of that expression where shit is compared to roses. Or your, shit, shit, the your shit smells of roses. Yeah, shit smells like roses. Like, it's usually in like kind of in like a, uh, the sense of like, you know, somebody somebody's like acting all pretentious and, and and it's the sort of attack on that it's like it's like oh and you think your shit smells like roses huh like that kind of thing 
I just want you all to know I found that sweatshirt and I will not be buying it. It's $175. Boy, you can make it. I know. But it wouldn't be fuzzy. It was fuzzy. That's why I liked it. I'm sure you could go to like Michael's or something and and get like the little fuzzy letters. Or Joann's or whatever the little fabric crafty stores are out there. So what does everyone think about um, Alexis and the vet? Do you think she's ever going to give him an answer? I mean, I'm, I would, that, I was surprised by that. I, I mean, I guess I shouldn't have been. It seems like sort of now in hindsight, like, oh, okay, like, of course he's going to be the puppy dog, just not, not being able to let go. But I kind of felt like, wow, that's such a huge diss from last season. How is he possibly? And I thought the opposite. I thought she was going to want to keep him on now that she's back because, you know, regardless of her feelings for Mutt, I mean, she's still not there with her like materialism and petty pettiness. So I, I assumed it was going to be the opposite that she was going to be kind of trying to get him back and he and he uh and he didn't want it he didn't want to and i'm starting to feel like maybe ted and twyla will eventually so they'll like um, swap partners yeah i'm thinking that that that's gonna eventually be be a thing i'm gonna ship those two characters yeah they would be i personally don't like like it bugs me how much she's leading him on like it just it really bothers me yeah, I find it pretty cruel. But I don't know that she really, like, she kind of, but doesn't really quite understand what she's doing. Like, I feel in that sense, she's somewhat clueless when it comes to that kind of stuff. But then I also feel like she kind of does know because, like, the conversation that she had with Mutt and everything. So I don't know. Sometimes I don't like Alexis, but. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan, I'll be honest. <laughs> I think her character's funny. Um, but uh, I also felt like Mutt in this episode, I feel like their, their sleeping together has also sort of altered his personality a little bit. He, he you know, he's been so standoffish, so aloof <clears throat> throughout season, season one. And this episode starts off just he's like full on wanting to kiss and want you know and just like all he's all in so to speak yeah which, which i don't i don't know how i don't know how i feel about it i kind of like i kind of like that aloof character so you know i feel like right now alexis has a lot of power a lot of power yep what are you munching on tonight john I'm lunching on cheddar and sour cream potato chips. Okay, John, you were talking about Roland's name. Oh my Roland gosh. Roland shit. That, what that about mutt shit? Because <laughs> dog shit. Oh, like dog yeah. shit. Oh my God. Yeah. Poor Jocelyn. I mean, she married into that family. I feel like mutt. Like, you know, probably like mutt. Take on his mom's ass. Like, Mutt, is that a name? That's is that, is that his a, name. It's not no, a I name. Know. Oh. No, I know. No, I know. I know. I know that. I'm saying, is that a name? I mean, like. like I do not is, is personally there, know any Mutts, but I'm sure there are Mutts out there. Are, are there any real Mutt? Like, is that a thing? Let me, Sh let me actually Shania check. Shania Twain's husband? I don't know if that was his nickname or if that was his actual name, but he was called oh, Mutt. Yeah, Mutt Lang. That's right. Mutt dog names. <laughs> <laughs> 150 best, <laughs> best <laughs> Mutt names. Oh <laughs> mutt name meaning and family history. Ancestry.com. The Mutt family. No, okay. That's a last name. Um first name for mutt first name 
what do we got here? Uh, great names for a mixed breed dog. <laughs> if you just look at <laughs> um, men named Mutt, it there's like a whole most famous people named Mutt. Yeah, Sick. I found this a website that says most famous, and this might be the same thing, Lily. It says most famous person named Mutt, fame meter zero out of a hundred, Mutt Wilson, <laughs> July 20th, 1896. <laughs> yeah, that's what I wrote. Men, I wrote, I, I typed in men named Mutt. I'm not getting anything. Mutt, <laughs> Mutt, nothing, not a thing. Let me see, maybe go to. Here. says the name mutt is considered very unique in the world and no other famous person has this specific name <laughs> basically no one mutt wilson is the most famous person and i think it's a, this, it's a and joke. this person is not <laughs> famous at all has, has zero fame whatsoever was he's just born in Name oh, wait, the, the name the name the name is the name mutt is on this baby naming website and it says number 9079 in popularity in 2005 so no one yeah i mean the only mud that you're seeing here are just pictures of the actor from this show <laughs> i mean so it was really it was truly like like what can we name him that is funny with with the name shit and you know they they said they said naming him dog would probably be a little too on the nose but what about mutt like let's see is there anybody out there who's named mutt oh look this guy named mutt wilson existed in from 18 century <laughs> perfect <laughs> and honestly and i don't even know that they ever talk about it i can't remember like i said i don't remember like a lot of this stuff like little stuff but like just going off the relationship that he has with both his parents, I feel like he would not take his dad's last name. Like whatever Jocelyn's name, like maiden name was, I feel like that's probably what he goes by. Because he's just like not close with his dad. And also that's a choice last name for sure. But he, he just feels closer with his mom to me. So I don't know. There was a baseball player um, that died in 1962, Mutt Williams. All right, John, did you want to talk about anything else? Or are we ready for episode two? Either John. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I'm talk, yeah, I am talking to myself. Just, just <laughs> straight up talking to myself. Um, yeah, I say we do it. I say we just go for it and just go ahead and watch episode two. Everybody ready? Ready. 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 Ready, Frederick. All right. Here we go. One, two, and three. Is she really almost 40? I thought she was only in her not. 20s. I think maybe she just doesn't know how old her children are. <laughs> I mean, she doesn't know Alexis's middle name, so. Angela.
we it, is our on is enchiladas a real thing or are they saying enchiladas she's enchiladas. saying enchiladas. they're enchiladas but she's just saying enchilada mm -hmm. uh -huh. yes she's just being a little bit bougie and i just realized what episode this is and i'm already laughing i know me too <laughs> i did so good She's like, what? Oh, it's appropriate that he's eating pie today. Oh yeah, happy Pi Day, everybody. Oh my gosh, is it really Pi Day? Yep, it's Pi Day. I forget it every year that, until like two that, late. <laughs> that explains why my work had pie in the cafeteria and they never have pie. It was so random, I didn't even know. Oh, I could not be that nice. Right? I wonder if those plates are really as heavy as they normally are in Russia. And how often she had to do this scene. Do you look legit? I would have said, hold on. Stop talking for a second. I'll be right back. I would have not stood there. <laughs> he keeps talking. Uh oh. Ooh, maybe Alexis and Ted. I mean, sorry, uh, Stevie and Ted. Stevie and Ted.
They'd be perfect together. She would I think murder his her. Sons might be a Why bit. would you ever say something? <laughs> She'd kill him and bury him in the backyard. I'm still holding out for her and David. I love that the captions just said laughs falsely. Oh my God, this performance is brilliant. Annie Murphy is amazing. I think her and Ted look like brother and sister, like a lot of like, <laughs> I don't know why.
I feel like the commer- the the cuts to commercial, quote unquote, cuts to commercial are a little more abrupt in these two episodes than anything. I know. Season. I've been noticing that. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I don't think I would eat anything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as ridiculous as that sounds, I, I'm laughing because I think I remember being equally confused when I first read a recipe that said fold cheese in. <laughs> Just fold it in. Just fold it in. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember for like a, it was a risotto many years ago and I didn't understand what that meant fold the cheese in. It reminds me of sleeping beauty <laughs> I hear Babsy back there what does burning smell like I can never relate to that because I feel like I've always known what that means because I've cooked forever and I just like can't understand how people couldn't know that but I guess oh, you I started like, cooking like for the first time in my 30s. So, baking. oh, yeah, no, I was my You do it a lot in baking. Baking's like always folding things in. That scene is well, one baking. of the most quotable scenes in this show. What is on her head? Is she, is she a fairy? What or is she wearing? A spray or what is she? <laughs> her dress is like wedding white. It's, <laughs> it's a breakup headband. It's her direct headband. The fact that they're the leaves they're, they're, are sort of jiggling like yeah. that is just... <laughs> What's the green things that are like coming into her hair? <laughs> I think it's like a ribbon with that on it and it's tied around. Maybe they look like they're just hanging down though. They look like leaves. I know. <laughs> I'm having a feeling that we're going to get that classic now he's going to go for somebody else and she's going to start to get jealous of him and I think that same thing with David he's going to start like liking Steve Stevie now that Stevie is not as into him manga it's called manga not manga but okay Hey, Regina, does Bob remind you of someone from Bob's Burger? Does Bob remind me of somebody from Bob's Burger? Oh, I was asking Regina because he totally reminds me of Bob's Burgers. He does. Bob. Oh, goodness. She looks like Bob's friend. Oh, Teddy. Yep.
Jocelyn has a fake kitchen window painted. Very odd. Oh, Lily, really a window when, there. when we moved in our house, there was a fake window painted above the sink. Like, why? Aw, teachable moment with his mommy. Oh, poor Ted. <laughs> oh, so awkward for Johnny. Oh, poor Ted. When it sounds so invasive. Deeply selfish yet charming. That is a great <laughs> way to describe it. I'm sorry, but that, like, Velveeta, and it, it's kind of horrifying. Uh oh. It looks kind of like peanut butter. <laughs> That was great. That was a fun opening to the season. Did you know how to fold in the cheese, John? I do know how to fold cheese in now. I learned it in my, uh, I'd say I learned that in my mid 30s. So a little over a decade ago, I wouldn't have known.
prior to that? Around the time David did. I don't know. He's in his 30s. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, you know, if I'm be honest, I, it, it's not that difficult to figure out, you know, the idea, but. Even if you just sort of threw it in there and like stirred really... it around, I think you could possibly get a similar effect if you didn't know what folding meant, but. Yeah, well, I mean, no, I mean, the, the problem is, is that you don't know what it means. You might actually think, is there something that I need to do to this beforehand? Um. But folding in the cheese, I mean, yeah, I, I think it's probably pretty self-explanatory. So Mary says that um, Alan just told her that when he first watched this episode, he didn't know what folding in the cheese was either. So if you didn't know, you wouldn't be alone. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, if you didn't, if you didn't really grow up, I didn't really grow up in a, you know, like a culinary household, you know, so, right. you know, I was, I was a latchkey kid and, you know, like our, our dinners were pretty much like, you know, meat and potato type, type stuff. Like we didn't really get fancy. It wasn't until I, it wasn't really until I left home and, you know, kind of met, met eclectic friends and got into, into cultural things and art and fine dining and all of that that like I got interested in anything even remotely like food related so I I, I mean I just did, I wouldn't have heard I wouldn't have known about anything culinary or cooking until you know late later in my life I was like really addicted to food network as a young kid so you know I I sort of just like took in a lot of cooking knowledge all, all at once for many years so I did I too I watched the frugal gourmet with my dad when I was like really little then I think he tried but hey look but, but now look at me making to bloody mary aspix you know like like a pro like an absolute pro I can follow I can follow a recipe re pretty well so I, I'd say now I'm as good of a cook as the recipe is good <laughs> But cooking is a lot easier than baking, but it's oh yeah, fun. I can't bake. I can't. Bake. I can't make a cake, and Regina will tell you that I can't make a cake. I, what just, I it, ugh, I'm terrible. What I would love to be able to to do well, like I'd really love to do be able to do it well. I'd love to be able to bake bread well, like bake a really really good loaf of just normal bread nothing fancy just a just a nice beautiful loaf of where cake. are you with a you need, you, you need a you need a just start a starter with flour and water you like feed it every day for yeah, like yeah i know i've tried i can't bake regular i don't know bread. what's wrong but i can't yeah i can't do regular bread but i can uh, do sweet bread like banana bread and zucchini oh yeah bread. i mean that all yeah. those breads I yeah. love making regular bread. That's one of my favorite things to make. I, just yeah, like a, I just a loaf of normal bread. bread. Yeah, I just make a, no, a loaf of no, normal bread. And I don't have like Are a you, bread. You really just need yeast. I mean, yeast. How do you, how, uh, how do you, how do you do it? We, we were trying to do it for a while in a Dutch oven. Um, and we just, I mean, they just came out like, they just came out like little Frisbees. Like, like little hard yeah. frisbees. Yeah, it's like it didn't did it proof long enough. Yeah, you have to knead them and proof them and follow because every all, all see like pr like proof them. Pr proof them is about as foreign to me as folding in the cheese was foreign. Oh. To you put it in like a semi warm moist place, right, and then let it. <laughs> let yeah, it do I its knew thing. nothing yeah. about proving before I started watching the Great British Bake Off. Isn't that or, one of the and stuff too? Or is I, it I, I have that guy's uh, bread book and I have not followed any of his recipes. There's, there's a bread yet. book that a lot of beginners use. I will put yeah, we, to it. Yeah, we, we, we have, I think it's probably the book. It's the, the uh, flour, salt, yeast, water or something like that. Like, and there's, like, a there's like, one. I mean, there's a bunch of them. That, that, that one we have, it's like super simple and like, you know, really, but we just couldn't get, I mean, we just could not get a 
version of it that was like we couldn't get a version of it that was like anything but a little little hard frisbee john you just time. get a bread there, there's a there's they a book literally yeah, called a, bread baking for beginners i will put the link down or you Discord. can just do what I do and cheat a little bit and use a bread machine and it does all that for you. Yeah, oh, I, I thought you were going to say I cheat a little bit and machine. go to the store and buy some bread. <laughs> That's <laughs> how I make my bread. If I That's how I do it too, Mandy. Sometimes I don't, I don't, I use my bread machine like for my pizza dough a lot of times and stuff like that. I'll, I'll, I'll let it do the work and then I, I will do the rest. Like I'll let it do the kneading and the, and the, and the rest and the, the proving time in that and then i'll like i make a, a finished pola that's really really good with like the big with cardamom and big chunky um what's it called like a coarse uh sugar and it's it, it's like my favorite thing but i i almost always use my um my bread maker to do the the kneading for me i want to be and a, then you it i want to be it. able to do it like i want to be able to to do it very simply though i mean I, I get that with the bread maker we don't have a bread bread maker i don't know if we'll get a bread maker but you know we had a dutch oven for a while and i just i like i liked the idea i mean maybe this is just like you know just so, sort of silly romance romanticism but i kind of just like this idea of being able to create like humanity's first thing you know it's like it's base essential food being able to do that with just the simplest ingredients and in the simplest way and like the fact that i could we couldn't do it i couldn't do it um the, like there's just something about that that was a little frustrating like wow like this has existed for thousands of years and i can't get it to i can't well, get anything other than a frisbee maybe you should try pop uh, awesome erin erin posted a recipe for irish soda bread and i posted the book that has needed breads no need breads so i make yeah. a good beer bread for beginner. Really easy it's just like beer sugar and uh mm -hmm. oh beer bread is super easy just but just like what, beer bread. but like but what about just the, those four ingredients water salt and, yeast yep flour just those four ingredients those four ingredients and heat like like i want to make bread like that you can it's, do it. You can absolutely you just gotta let do it. Sit. I, I you can do it. Make sure you don't get like fast, right? You make you, and you, get, you just got to give that the time to do it. And yeah, you know, that's you the to, other. You have to need it how it says it has says to do it. And I, I think you can do it. I we have faith in yeah, you. Yeah, my the friend other can make bread. Says, don't time. ever need it. Time, 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 and patience. Yeah, and all those, all, all of them take all, but depending on what kind of bread you're making, I think they all require different sorts of, they have, there's even different kinds of kneading techniques and stuff to, to use. So who all here thinks that, um, that David is going to start to um, develop feelings for Stevie? Wow. I, I think he should. <laughs> I, I want him to. I, I don't know if he will or not. And I, yeah, I think um, most of us up here have seen it, so we're not going to comment. I on haven't anything. seen it, so I, I, I kind of, I want him. I want him to. And who, who all here thinks that, um, that Alexis is going to also start to like Ted because Ted is going to start dating somebody else. Wow, I'm the only one. Interesting. I think yeah. they'll introduce more people. I think somebody else will come along. But I think she, if when he is dating somebody else, she'd probably get jealous a little bit. I'm not. I'm not crazy about season the first two episode mutt. Like I'm not. Like I, I, I was a little bit more into standoffish mutt last season and He's this more season. Clingy. He's a little more clingy. Yes, he's a. Thank you. That is the word. He's clingy. I don't want my mutt to be clingy. I want He's my mutt to be. He's having his Dean arc right now. He is Funny. having his Dean arc. He really is waiting for her to get off the school bus. You know, <laughs> like, like, he, yeah, like he, annoying. he is being a little, he's being a little Dean in this season so far. Well, not spoiling episodes. anything at all. He will become more enjoyable. I do promise that. As most characters will. 
who all feels that he's a little clingy this these first two episodes oh yes oh yes yeah you can do no wrong I mean, in my book you do no <laughs> you're like cling away buddy cling yep, exactly. away <laughs> Maybe he's- C- cling on my friend um yeah it's not for me it's not for me i liked him last season i, I think he maybe serious. seemed more clingy because he was keeping his distance because and it seems really drastic because he was keeping a really big metaphorically like a big distance between them because of the relationship he was in with twyla and then the relationship she was in with ted so uh, more so his right. relationship with twyla because i mean she's been with ted and you know we all saw what happened but it's because he's like okay you're not gonna be with him anymore so now it's like all of a sudden like they're like really like there's not that gap between them anymore and so it seems really drastic but i think it's just sort of like if it would have been more gradual it wouldn't seem clingy but because it was so like quick it seems clingy but i think it's okay we're kind of in a relationship now so like i'm here kind of thing it's kind of like i see it i don't know Hmm. i see that too lily yeah, maybe. Um, yeah, I don't know what it is. I, I, you know, just just in terms of character, I, I, I was a little more into my last season. These first two episodes, or maybe he's just excited because he finally got her. He's like, yeah, oh, but I, but I, but I think what I liked about Mitt, yeah, but I think what I liked about Mitt, Mutt, Mitt, Mutt, Mitt, Mitt, <laughs> <laughs> Mitt, Mitt. What I liked about, I mean, like Mitt is a real name, but um, Mutt is just ridiculous. Uh, I think what I liked about him was that he, um, he didn't feel eager to be in the relationship. You know, I guess there, there was something was that I liked about him. There was kind of a mystique about him. Right. He was mysterious. You know, there was just a little bit of, of like, you know, who, who is this guy? What does he want? You know? And, um, and I just think uh, just the, well, I mean, it's only two episodes. It's not like, you know, it's not like I can really truly judge much, but yeah, I just felt a little, just felt a little clingy and, 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 lost a little bit of the, of the edge that made him to me such a, a um, uh, fascinating character that I wanted to to know more about, but An- Annie Murphy is is a straight up comedy genius, like like the end. Like she is freaking incredible. This episode, that scene with Ted, where she's breaking up with Ted, is just comedy like a com it's like a comedy workshop it was just incredible absolutely incredible i actually like something i didn't really notice before like this watch was the dress she was wearing was like very wedding looking to me like it was very like wedding like 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 yes i mean also like that was definitely a choice for sure oh yeah for sure I mean, it was a choice, but it, like, what was so great about it, and, and this, I don't I mean, I, I don't know whose choice this was. I'm, you know, I'm guessing. I think Dan had a lot of um, the costume, so. Oh, really? That, that yeah. makes that makes sense. But, like, somebody put that jiggly thing on her head. <laughs> oh, no. Just, 100%. It's just, <laughs> so it's just completely stole the scene. I mean, like, it just at all of those little leaves just jiggling at, like, high frequency was just, it was just hilarious. It was just hilarious, and it just wor- worked so perfectly with her neurotic, nervous, like, thing that was going on there. And it just perfectly juxtaposed that dress you know which kind of looked like a wedding dress it was just the whole thing was just amazing it was kind of peacock-ish you know yeah i mean dan really had a big part in that just because i saw like the documentary and he was like really involved with like a lot of that so i can totally see him be like yeah this is totally ridiculous put it on put it on her head while she's trying to get through this breakup where she can't even like form where have wobbly things on her scalp just like boinging at the whole eye <laughs> ridiculous like 
it's kind of annoying a little bit, but like I think that's the point. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, Annie Murphy hasn't, I mean, she hasn't done a whole ton of stuff after Schitt's Creek, but I will, I will just plug her episode of Murderville on Netflix, because it's downright hilarious. If does, you she like play, humor, does she play the you, same type of character? Well, she plays her, well, that whole show is like mostly improv, she's improving. She, did, she, did, she doesn't get a script, and so she has to improv, but um the things they have her do Ugh, it's just hilarious oh that's that show like they have like re- different guests like all the time and they yes have the it's like six to, like, episodes probably the entire thing yeah yeah it's six episodes each episode's a different um celebrity hey hunter hey y'all i just want to plug any murphy's show kevin can f himself it's really good I think they canceled it. I think it was only one season, but it was really, it was one of the most unique shows I've ever What does that stream on? I do see that on her list. They had it on YouTube for a while. I think it was, I want to say AMC, but I'm not sure. But the the concept was, you know, she's in an unhappy marriage. And then, um, so when her husband is in the scene, it, it shows like a sitcom. So there's a laugh track and it's all bright and sunny. And then whenever he exits the scene, it's like a really, really dreary, like drama. And she's miserable and depressed. It's brilliant. Cool. It, it, do you know what it streams on? on Amazon, YouTube. Apple. It looks like it uh, might be an AMC show. Oh, I think it's AMC. Yeah, but it was. I saw like the first four or five episodes, and it was. It's just the way they executed is genius, and she's really good at drama. Actually. Cool. Um, that actually reminds me. By the way, uh, and at the, it was good that you um, that you did the preamble again. I realized when you did the preamble that I forgot to remove Amazon Prime from the preamble script that was from the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. So you being able to tell us that it was on Netflix was a, a good save. Yeah, I, I noticed that when you were saying it, and I was like, oh well, but maybe it's on Amazon too. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure you can buy it. Probably, yeah. It actually is free on Amazon Prime. Really? The first the first three episodes of that show is on um Amazon Prime. Oh Annie's other show, sorry. And then it's under AMC Plus. I see. Yeah, uh Shit's Creek is on Amazon, so you can like keep that in there probably. But it's bad, so maybe not. <laughs> Might mess up the uh time for, for- it might be through IMD TV or whatever, yeah, but that I has, think that's I think that's good. yeah, and that has commercials on it. The the actor. This is going back to the first episode. The actor who played the Amish man in the first one had an accent. Was that just the actor has an accent, or is that an accent of Amish? of Amish um, men because he sound they do have Amish, an accent. they should sound they should sound a Dutch they, yeah, they should they sound, sound Dutch German right Dutch. yeah yeah in college there was a small sh- Amish village outside of my college town they everybody who lived there was Amish and they were no electricity no technology they rode buggies into town but they had an Amish festival every year and everybody from my college town would descend on them. And I felt kind of bad for them because the way they reacted to us, but they made so much money because they're such incredible. They're craftsmanship. Yeah, their craftsmanship is like, you you don't get much. I I live in the middle of, uh, well, I'm from like kind of the middle of Amish country in Ohio and, 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 uh, they're that they they're the biggest tourist draws ever though they know how to make money and like they're so rich they're also they all have so much money and now they all drive ride around in their electric bikes 
the really? generators. Oh yeah, they're oh, everywhere. And electric wow. bikes are expensive. Electric bikes are not cheap. Are not cheap. No, they're not. No, and they and then they pull their little like the, the the women like pull their children in the little trailers. Like I have one for my daughter that I pull, in, but I don't have an electric bike. You know, but they ride up because it's hilly. We we live in like it's a hilly area. Uh, um, yeah, they're they're just they have they have just like that area has grown up so much just in my lifetime. It's like, it's, it's, it's incredible how much tourism there is and, and it draws people from all over. I think, you know, yeah. out, definitely out of state and stuff. Yeah. When I was out there visiting in Ohio, that's one of the things that I've done most of the time. Oh, yeah, yeah, I go out yeah. there with the family. Yep. It's totally so, it, what's, so it's what's so interesting. What's so interesting is that electric bike technology is pretty advanced. Like it, it right? like I, like it's, it, I like most, people don't have electric bikes because it's right. they're very expensive and you know it's really so they won't be they won't be like plugged in so they won't be on an electric grid but you'll find them like they'll have lights and stuff in their house but they'll have like a car battery in their house that they connect oh to. yeah they, and they, they only gener- use it like they use generators and stuff yeah right so they're not going to be like hooked to an electrical grid like they're not going to be paying power bills and that kind of stuff but they'll have like generators and so batteries. it's more about not being connected to this like larger technological well, I think they societal make up rules thing. as they go along no offense to any yeah <laughs> but i really do yeah, because no, the there's technology like advances levels. they almost have to right yeah there's different levels because like even when i was out um the last place that i toured one of the girls that was there was amish but she had an iphone so it's, oh yeah yeah they do so there's like different levels that my of, my of how they live. my sister is a labor and delivery nurse and she said that you know the amish guys when they come in some of they're always they're always doing business you know they're always on the phone like the whole time do, interesting doing their whatever business i just think I, I i mean the phone thing is like well we all have phones so it's like okay and they're using phones as well i just find it interesting that we don't all have electric bikes because electric bikes are pretty advanced, you know, like, you know, in order to generate that kind of electricity and that kind of power, you know, that like uh, there's a electric bike place, like somewhere here in Los Angeles, I've walked in, I was like, Oh my God, these bikes are like super expensive and whatnot. So it just, it's, I just find it interesting that, you know, it's a culture that is specifically or you know, has at least been known to be against technology and they've got electric bikes, which I think are kind of like, you know, I could imagine the whole world having electric bikes. Like, or I, I could imagine electric bikes being a normal thing in like the 2030s, you know, like I think we're still like 10 w- years away from like everybody having an electric bike, you know, but they already have them, which I think is interesting. Well, and I think that they even have like, I was trying, I, I kind of think I, I go, I, I, I don't go out that way very often, like way out there, but um it's called Millersburg. Um, but my son goes to band camp out there once a year. And the last couple of years, I can't believe how, like just tons of them, but I think they actually have like, uh, they might even have like charging areas for them to like, you know, stop and charge or, or whatever they, and I, and I could see where they had, Oh, e-bike, e-bike, uh, repairs and e-bike, whatever. They just have all kinds of stuff. So I, I wonder if like, they're not even necessarily Amish people, you know, that are marketing that to them, you know, they're, they, they, so they, as long as they're utilizing somebody else's and they're not, you know, it's not in their possession that they're, they're, they're not paying for that charge or whatever, like, or they're, or they're paying somebody else to do that. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, they're not, they don't have it at their home or something. I, I wonder if that's also like, as long, as far as like the, the charging goes and stuff, if they can do it somewhere else. And then interesting. I don't know. Well, uh, I just I, I I just wasn't really sure if that actor in the show was just we cast an actor with a phenomenal beard, um, and uh, he happens to have an accent, um, uh, or if like that was supposed to be a thing because she didn't have one, she didn't have an accent. Um, I feel like so. some of them talk a lot more. I used to work in retail, and some of them when they would come in, some of them have there. There's de- like it was Anna that said that there's different levels of there's like is it called like beachy Amish and there's there's different levels of them that are um that are more strict and then they go down to Mennonite where they're they're they Mennonite are are pretty they I think they still they use electricity and stuff they're not as as strict so I think that it depends on 
how old order Amish they are. If they're they're real old order, then they they definitely. My understanding is that Mennonites and Amish are actually two different cultures. That was my understanding is that Mennonite and Amish are two different cultures. They just happen to have similarities. Yeah, I think well, they're all kind of from. Um, I don't know if they're from the same originally, like sort of from the same area or what. Because I, yeah, they are, they are very similar and they were. All I know is that my grandfather, one of his like dreams in life was to see Pennsylvania Amish country. He never got to. Um, that was like a big dream of his. But he never did. So maybe I will one day. Yeah. Well, if you come to Ohio, it's full of Amish. <laughs> All right. Lots and the, lots of Amish here. The, that's the next best. I'm, I'm, I'm only an hour from Pennsylvania, so. Yeah. Um, well, uh, we've got a couple more minutes here. Anything else that we want to talk about in this episode? We, we, we discussed um, the fact that David is almost certainly going to start having feelings for Stevie. That um, once Ted gets over his feelings, he's going to start dating Twyla and then and then Alexis is going to start getting jealous of that. Mutt is going to get clingier and clingier the, the, as the season progresses until he's even worse than Ted. Um, and uh, what else? And um, yeah, that's about it. I, you know, are, are they going to live in this hotel the whole time? Being awesome. Are they ever? Are, are, I feel like that's the shtick are, of the show. They, they're never going to get out of this town. They're going to be stuck. I feel there. like that's the shtick of the show. Is that like is that they live in this hotel? And I I am guessing that that won't change the entire series. Uh, I think they will always live in that hotel, and that's just part of the ch charm of, and weirdness of the show. This this show reminds me. I don't know if anybody watched uh, cause I and it was out later. Was that uh, bless this mess with with uh dax shepherd did anybody watch that show something about this reminds Ooh, me of that I don't yes know. it's just kind of quirky weird town so but I, I i really like that show and i was i was maybe because i'm i'm a homesteader and stuff and that's kind of what they're trying to do but um it just kind of it reminds me of that like the quirkiness of the people and it's just kind of funny and they're kind of in over their heads and I haven't seen it, so um, I don't know. But I'm having fun with this. I'm curious to see what happens next and whether or not I'm, I'm right with all of my predictions, or at least some of my predictions. Hoping that I'm right with all of my predictions, as always. Thanks for hosting, Anna and John. I got to take off. I hope you guys have a good night. Thanks yes, for coming. Good night. we're taking off as well. Um,